Hey guys, welcome back to the Technology Architect video playlist series. And today we have finally reached macro services. Okay, so I want to talk a lot about macro services actually. So with macro services, what happens is you start dividing the, the business logic between different modules, like very distinct modules. For example, you have finance, you have administration, you have biz ops, they're all three very different things. And um, you get some benefits, you get ease of deployment because now you know these guys can work very differently than these guys and these guys don't need to know about what these guys are doing, right? They can be different technical technology teams. They can deploy their software at different times of the day without affecting the other guys. You have separation of concern. I mean, like I said, you know, different, uh, they don't have to have a lot of dependencies with them. Uh, the teams could be se completely separate as well. They have reduced blast radius. If the finance microservice macro service goes down, uh, it, it doesn't affect the other two macro services. And you have a lot of maintainability now, right? So it's very easy to maintain code. I mean, in the sense, um, maybe this is written in a different language and this is diff written in a different language altogether. This is in Rust, this is in Golang, this is in Node.js, right? So you have ease of maintainability and uh, because the specialists can only focus on uh, in one place. Uh, now, the important thing to note here is the word macro. Macro basically means that you still don't have like uh, a micro concern of each separate uh, activity, right? You have a macro concern in the sense finance is a very big function. So, so you won't uh, macro service like let's say you have like just seven and eight, eight macro services in the entire architecture, and that's that's about it because they're like very big functions. So finance is a really big function, right? They have their own databases, so it's very different. It's distinct from service-oriented architecture. But what people are not able to differentiate is between macro services and micro services they think it's the, it's the same thing i mean why do you have two different names right microservices um and microservices they're both the same thing they have different databases they have different type of services and uh, we want to reduce dependency between the services we want to have separation of concern we want to have maintainability deployment reduce blast radius so all of those things they're the same benefits as microservices why do you have two separate names that's because uh, macro services are not decomposed in the sense they are at a very macro level and uh, and you you go into a microservice architecture after you've 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 been in a microservice architecture so you can further decompose it into a microservice architecture when you want even further separation of concern and even more atomic level control okay how does that happen that happens uh, with business based decomposition so you start with macro services and you do something called as business based decomposition where you start uh, dividing the microservice into small microservices so for example uh, in the case of finance here with microservices, the first step to convert a microservice into microservice would be finance, you'll start dividing that into three microservices. There'll be subscriptions, taxation, and invoicing. Three different things, right? Finance uh, looks like a big business function and we'll divide it into three separate uh, business functions. So subscription is a different business function. Taxation is a different business function and invoicing is a different business function. So it's called business-based decomposition. Then with administration, you have support and knowledge base, two separate business teams, right? Ops, you have monitoring and failure recovery. So now we, we're starting to go to a place where there's going to be like uh, even lesser mix of or, or lesser confusion of um, business logic. Then you have something called as domain-based decomposition. So for example, you had reached finance and then you had reached subscriptions. Now, uh, domain-based basically means that it's going to be very tech oriented. So this was like very business team oriented. So the business team was taking a decision on, on you know, the product managers, the business analysts, those guys took a decision of how you can divide the microservice into microservice. But now the tech guys, that they know that in subscriptions, it's not the same thing. Like for a business guy, sub subscriptions is just one thing. But for a tech guy, we know that uh, subscriptions is a very complex uh, thing right there there i'm just giving you two examples that there's card retries if there are any card failures the next month or if somebody wants to upgrade and downgrade the service it could be a separate microservice so these are two microservices that didn't come out of subscriptions and then you have invoicing where you can have creation of the invoice can be a separate microservice altogether which will require a lot of front end helping and parsing and you know formatting the pdfs and all of that uh, automatedly obviously and then you have can i have reconciliation where you can have a banking api check if the bank ledger also uh, is consistent with the uh, the records in your system to create those invoices then you have a sending mechanism so this could be a completely different team which is responsible for creating those emails emailing services that send out all these invoices so uh, 
So just to recap again, right? Microservices are like really big business functions. You decompose them with the help of like a business-based decomposition where you start creating, uh, you know, different microservices for different teams. And you can further go one step down to have domain-based decomposition where you have like, you know, multiple uh, technology-based differentiations between different microservices. So at the end, once you apply these steps a couple of times, right, you'll, you'll end up getting a lot of microservices. Now, Platforms like Uber and Netflix, they have more than 4,000 microservices now because they are, they are further decomposing their services. They keep further decomposing them. They create, start, keep creating new services. So it's happening like it's an ever evolving system. Now, one big, uh, flaw or one big problem that, uh, like, uh, the beginners, like somebody who's getting started with technology architecture, they would think is that the architecture that they made right now will be relevant let's say six months into the future, it won't be relevant. It has to continuously keep evolving. And that's one of the biggest uh, roles, right? So um, when somebody is going into tech architecture, they think that, oh, I just have to design this architecture once and then I can just chill, right? That's not the case. Every day you're faced with new problems. You're struggling and you're finding fixes for everything. So you have to be a really good problem solver as well, but on a macro level rather than at the code level, all right? So this is what I want to share with you that, you know, from microservices, we'll go into microservices. And next video is going to be about microservices and we'll deep dive deep into how microservices work i hope you enjoyed it uh, do subscribe in case you haven't i hope you're enjoying the series i know i have uh, uploaded this video after quite a, quite a small break uh, from the previous video it's because i'm doing a lot of things i mean i'm building this new company called armor it's a web3 cybersecurity company so i'm building that and um, yeah so I'm also writing a book with Pact Publishing for Rust for Blockchain Development. So there's a lot of stuff happening, but I will keep creating uh, videos as, as soon as I can, as often as I can. And I have to jump between like Golang and Rust and this series and the Web3 series. So whenever I get time, I'll keep uploading, I'll keep creating more. But I hope you're enjoying this. I hope your knowledge is, is increasing. And thanks a lot for all the support and uh, do subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.